Um, hello everyone, it's Answer International, and today I'm going to be covering a video which is going to be targeted to all you beginners out there, and that's the basics of ant keeping. Now in this video I'm going to try and cover all the real basics in ant keeping, from how to identify a queen, I'll do a re-tutorial on that, to feeding diets and things like that. And before we start this video, thank you guys so much for 200 subscribers. In fact, I think we're surpassing that now. We're almost at 250 and it means so much to me guys. So thank you so much for that. Now I'm going to start off this video by talking about basic ant body uh, parts. Um, ant body parts are important to know because you can use them to identify uh, a worker from a queen. And it's really important just to have a general understanding of what ants are in the first place. So at the front of the ant, you have the head, of course, with the mandibles and the uh, antennae. Um, behind the head, you have the thorax, which has most of the organs in the ant, and it's what you can use to identify a queen from a worker. And then at the end, you have the abdomen slash gaster, which is where the social stomach is. Um, so in every colony, we know that there is a queen ant, which is the primary egg layer of the colony. We have the workers, which make up the bulk of the colony, but there's also some other ants. Um, these are these ants here are queen elates and male elates. Uh, these reproductive ants, their purpose is to fly out in a nuptial flight, which usually occurs after a rainstorm in uh, springtime. Uh, their job is to re uh, reproduce with other male elates and queen elates. And what you can see in a nuptial flight is a bunch of winged ants and ants covering the floor and keep in mind that nuptial flights do happen um, over a course of a couple of weeks or even months sometimes. So what will happen is these male lates will reproduce with the queens um, more than once, maybe two to three times, and the males will die and the queens will start their own uh, colonies in their claustral chambers which are like little holes in the ground that they dig out to start their own colonies. So once your uh, queen has its eggs uh, it will eventually have its first workers. Now this first set of workers is known as nanitics. Now these nanitic workers are a bit different to regular workers. They're much smaller than the regular size of workers and they don't ever leave the nest and their main purpose is to support the larger generations of workers to come. I'd also like to quickly cover keeping polygynous colonies. So polygynous basically means when two queens will join forces to start up their own colony and sometimes the queens will continue out their colony. So this can have some advantages and disadvantages. Some of the advantages are is that it leads to a greater success rate of the colony. There'll be more nanitics than usual to help around the nest and the colony will be much stronger as it will control more land and will have more access to resources. But there can also be some possible disadvantages. The queens may kill each other after the first nanitics arrive, depending on if they're properly polygynous. The colony may split after a certain um, amount of time. Or more queens may mean more space and more food, which can be bad in some cases. So just to cover guys, make sure you're keeping your queens in dark areas and in test tube setups until they hit around the 20 to 50 worker margin, depending on their size. Once they hit that size, make sure to move them into a formicarium. And I didn't really cover this, but make sure that they have a kind of insulator to make sure that the ants will slip off and they won't escape from your formica or formicarium that you provide them with. So now I'm going to talk about how to identify a queen ant. I did cover this in one of my videos on how to catch a queen, but I'd like to go into a bit more detail on how to identify a queen ant. So, the best way to identify a queen ant is through the thorax. Usually the thorax is visibly much larger than the workers and you can actually see the wing scars there and the gaster is usually much larger because it needs to um, lay eggs and um, stuff like that. And the queen in terms of size is much larger and darker in color. And here's my Solenopsis geminata queen with a couple of eggs that she recently made. So here's an image of a queen and you can see that the yellow section is very large compared to let's say a worker right here you can see that the yellow section of the thorax is much smaller um, but what about the male elates the male elates also have thoraxes very similar to the queen elates but a way that you can distin uh, distinguish them is that the male elates have much smaller heads and thin thoraxes and don't really look like ants at all um, they kind of look like little wasps sometimes so here's an image of a queen a male elate and a worker see if you can identify the queen in this image 
it's quite basic. It's the top right. You can see that the queen is much larger than the worker and the male elite. So now in this video, can you identify the queen? If you answer the large dark ant in the back, you're correct. Good job. But now for a much harder question. Are any of the ants here queens? If so, which one? If you answered there is a queen, good job. The queen is the top left ant, and this is a Myrmica queen and a Myrmica worker. And you can see that there's a very, not much distinguishing them. The worker looks very similar to the queen. But one way that you could identify them, besides the thorax, is if it has wings and it's flying around, sometimes you might be able to catch it then. Uh, and the last test is in this video, do you see a queen ant? If you answered no, then good job, you got it right. And don't worry if you got any of these questions wrong. This was just um, some of the questions. Uh, and usually it's very rare to bump into those Myrmica queens and stuff like that. So now I want to talk about ant diets for your colonies. Now, in every colony or when your colony just has its first nititics, it's always good to provide your colonies with a source of protein. So I usually provide them with just mealworms. Um, I give them water through uh, a water feeder or a test tube portal. I mean, test tube, sorry. Um, and here are some ant jellies, which are optional. Um, they usually make your colony stronger and more energetic. You can find them on a bunch of different ant websites. And don't forget your sweets like honey and sugar water. Now finally, I want to talk about keeping wild-caught colonies. So personally, I tried to keep a wild-caught colony of these black crazy ants, but after about a month, they all died, including the queens, and they weren't doing so well. So personally, I would recommend not keeping wild-caught colonies if you're a beginner. Um, they would eventually die um, for some reason. There can, it might be because they're used to having more workers around, or many other features come into play. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'd like to make an apology for not posting very recently. I've been super busy with homework and tests and I'm still in school guys. So I hope you can understand why I have not been posting so lately. Um, but I do have a bunch of new videos coming out soon. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you can comment in the comment section below or you could uh, email us at bigheadedants.com and I'll try my best to answer all your guys' comments. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe because we have a new video every two weeks. That's what I'm going to try and aim for, guys. So thanks for watching. Now, before I end this video, guys, I have a huge announcement. I recently came into possession of a very large colony of ants that we have featured on this channel before, which I think you guys are going to be super psyched to see. And when I mean it is a huge announcement, it really is. This colony is really incredible and I can't wait to show you guys in the next episode of Ants International. Thanks for watching.